Hey guys, welcome back to the card review series. So today we are looking at a new XC card coming out soon. It just premiered in the anime and it is called Dark Rebellion XC's Dragon. And it's a pretty good card. So we're going to go ahead and go over it and I'm pretty much going to give you my opinion of it. So it is a Dark Dragon XC effect. Rank 4, 2500 attack, 2000 defense. It is made with two level 4 monsters. It's just generic. Now, one of the first things that popped in my mind when I saw this, I'm like, Dark? 2500 attack? Oh my god, I could eradicate it. So, you know, one of the key reasons why everybody was running Crazy Box, you can pretty much take that and just throw that in your extra deck, unless, you know, you're still worried about skill drain and all. But, uh, one of the key things that you could do with it is Eradicator, Crazy Box, just a generic card. This guy pretty much does that better, in my opinion, because his effect is better than just, because box, I can't do anything unless you flip a coin and there could be, you know, bad consequences. This guy, he's just like, you know what, my effect is just good, so you don't have to worry about that. So, um, its effect is you can detach two extra materials from this card, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls, have that monster's attack, and if you do, this card gains the same amount of attack. So it's kind of like a like a like a gale, like a generic one. You know, you cut you cut there and have you gain it. So you pretty much just you know gain a lot of attack. So and and keep in mind that it doesn't say to the end of turn. So this is permanent. This is a permanent attack gain. So if you grab something that's really, you know really strong and cut it in half and gain a good chunk of it, uh, you can definitely be a very very powerful beetle, Be beetle, beetle, beater. God, I can't talk sometimes. Um, I recently saw the episode that this card was in, um, I believe it was Arc 5, Episode 7, I want to say, where I have a character that kind of looks like uh, Yuya summon this card, and um, the anime effect is actually different than the actual card effect, and I really can't tell if it's, uh, some aspects are better in it, and then some things are worse, so let me go ahead and read the anime effect. You can detach one extreme material from this card, then target one level 5 or higher monster your opponent controls. Have that monster's attack, and if you do, this card gains the same amount of attacks, it changes life until the end, of the end phase. You're probably thinking like, well, how is that better, you know? You, know, you can only get level 5s or higher, it's only to the end phase. But the one thing that's really good about the ammo effect over this effect is that you only detach one extreme material, and you can use the effect multiple times, so, you know, you can go ahead and go, you know, effect, detach, cut you in half, gain the attack, effect, detach, cut you in half, gain the attack, so, you know, you can do it twice, and uh, that's exactly what the guy did in the anime, he actually uh, cut in half twice um, Mobius the Mega Monarch, so, you know, he cut him in half down to, what, 1400, and then he gained the 1400, so he's at 39, then he cut the 1400 in half to 700, then he gained the 700, so he's at 46, so, he attacked him, and the his opponent was only at 100 left, because you got to keep in mind, in the anime, they only have 4,000. Then, he tried to activate some card, where it's like, if you destroy a water monster, your mo the monster that destroyed his water monster is destroyed, and he takes his attack, so he would lose. But then, he activated some spell card, which pretty much blocked a trap, and then hit the guy for exactly 100, so he ended up losing. But, uh, this card is pretty good. I would not say that it's crap. My only problem with it is that the, the whole... Toolbox, at, toolbox aspect of Rank Force. That is my problem. That this card really doesn't have a place and a, and a reason to be played other than just being some beater that you're just cutting in half, shit in half. You know? Like, if it had, like, you know, detach two mixing materials, target a face up card, cut that monster's hack, attack in half, and a negate its effect, then I could come and see it. But this is just a beater. Like, this. This isn't part of the toolbox. You, you, you know, whether you run this card or don't run this card isn't really going to change how you play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh with your rank fours because it's just not part of the toolbox, and that's my big problem with it. It's just that you read it and you're like, God, that card is good, but I don't got room for it. A, I don't got room for it, and B, it's not even up there with the cards that you should be running. You know, I've seen uh, plenty of people review this card, and they're like, Oh, yeah, staple. No, it's not a staple. It's not. You probably don't have... If you have room in your extra deck to be running this deck, then you're just probably running a generic deck. You're running a generic deck to be able to run this generic card. You're not running an archetype. Because archetypes don't got room for this shit. I play Constellers. I don't got room for this shit. I got all my Pleiades, my M7s, my Omegas, my uh, Precipi. I do not have room to be running this guy. I gotta run my rank 5s. So, really, unless you're, you're a 
uh, a really generic deck, or you're just a deck that doesn't have to, you know, has, doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, themed monsters to deal with, then you're probably not going to have room to splash this. There's uh, plenty of other cards that you need to be, that need to be in your toolbox, your arsenal, before you even think about even putting this guy in your extra deck. Um, for example, if you can pull off fours, Cowboy, Dweller, 101, Exiton, Black Ship, you know, some decks have Love of the Chain, so, you see how it's it's filling up real quick, real quick, that, uh, that one uh, Cardinal guy that I revealed, re reviewed a couple uh, card reviews episodes ago, him, you know, there's so many cards that you need that are better than this, Ragna Zero, <laughs> uh, you know, and they all are part of your toolbox, and when you open your toolbox, the thing is that you may not use them every duel, but they will be there when you need them. This guy, you don't really need him. I mean, uh, uh, Heart Heartland Drake, I'm going to keep on doing, I'm going to keep on just, you know, popping in and out with cards that I keep on remembering that, you, you know, you should be having in your toolbox, because they're good, because when the situation comes, they will turn around the situation for you. 101, Exiton, come on. Black ship, black ship is actually really good, you know. With people using those hands, yeah, send it, you know. Um, uh, Ragnar Zero, you know. Ragnar Zero, you may go against Fire Fist, Harpies. I mean, nah, yeah, Harpies, you can Harpies. But no, but Dolce's are gaining in popularity, so you could go ahead and you know draw a card off of that. That's great with their field spell, so that should be in your extra deck. Uh, Cowboy, that's a given, you know. Dweller, you know. Hands, artifacts, uh, medulches, uh, uh, waters, it's, yeah, so, you, you know, you got your best water. Um, uh, Heartland Draco, because that's, you know, 2,000 in directly, you know, so, like I said, there's a ton of cards, a ton of cards that are in the toolbox that you play for a reason over this card. This card is just... That, that's the problem with it. It's just too generic. It's just too generic. It's so damn generic that you don't got room to play it because it just doesn't bring anything new to the table. It's too generic. It's like, it's like, it's like Gem Knight Pearl. It's just like Gem Knight Pearl, where it's just a beater. But you don't run it because it's not like it's going to, you know, pull out any new stops or anything. You know, the best thing that Gem Knight Pearl had it for is that it couldn't be, what, Fiendish Chained? But... That's pretty much it. And being the generic uh, monster with no effect, that's higher than the attack barrier, being 26 instead of 25, you know? We've had this before. But this guy, he's just too generic. I'm, I'm, saying it, I'm not saying it's a bad card. I'm just saying that the majority of decks just don't have room for him, that he doesn't have a spot in the toolbox. He's not a toolbox card. He's pretty much just a, a you know what, I got extra room, so why not? Maybe I'll use them, I don't know, you know? Just anything that this guy can do, others can do just as good or even better. They're part of the toolbox. This guy's not, and that's pretty much all I got to say about him. I'm not saying that he's crap. I'm just saying that ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Alright. I mean, unless Eradicator goes up to three, then, you know, if Eradicator goes up to three, then hell yeah, play him, because, oh, he's our Eradicator target. But with Eradicator being out one... And, you know, Spellbook's not being as powerful as they are, or, or they used to be, because they kind of suck this format. You know, uh, that's pretty much it. Unless Eradicator goes back up, I really do not see this card being played like that. So, tell me what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Card Review. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. And I will see you guys next Tuesday with another card. Thanks for watching.